defined as the presence of kidney damage or an estimated glomerular filtration rate less than 60 ml per minute per 1.7 uh, 73 meter square persisting for 3 months or more irrespective of the cause it is a state of progressive loss of kidney function ultimately resulting in the need for kidney transplant therapy kidney damage refers to the pathologic abnormalities either suggested by imaging studies or renal biopsy abnormalities in urinary sed sediment or increased urinary albumin excretion rates in children with chronic renal failure growth can be retarded and eruption will be delayed halitosis due to increase in blood urea level which will turn to ammonia perception of metallic taste in the mouth then sensitive disturbances in the form of alt third day sensations burning sensations of tongue and lips or sensations of enlarged tongue xerostomia due to liquid intake restrictions or due to secondary effects of medication example antihypertensive drugs possible glandular involvement such as minor salivary gland atrophy paleness of oral mucosa and skin due to decrease in the synthesis of erythropoietin in patient with an end stage or untreated renal disease uremic stomatitis is usually seen so presence of erythematous lesions in the oral cavity which are localized or generalized delayed eruption enamel hypoplasia due to alterations in the calcium and phosphorus then there is a great incidence of periodontal disease bone loss recessions and periodontal pockets renal osteodystrophy is a late sign of chronic renal disease usually due to alterations in calcium and phosphorus metabolism it is characterized by bone demineralization decreased trabeculation decreased thickness of uh, cortical bone abnormal bone healing after extraction and sometimes dental mobility as a consequence of loss of bone now coming to the orthodontic consideration there are three types of patients that may be referred for the orthodontic treatment patients with chronic renal failure who are not dialysis dependent so the patient's physician should be uh, consulted and orthodontic treatment should be deferred if renal failure is advanced and dialysis is imminent then the orthodontic care for patient on dialysis so usually patients are on a waitlist for kidney transplantation for such patients the patient's physician should be consulted there is no major contradiction to orthodontic treatment in such patients it is better to treat such patients prior to kidney transplantation before immunosuppression causes gingival overgrowth then children who have received kidney transplant so the transplant patients are given immunosuppressant drugs in order to prevent graft rejection they often exhibit drug induced gingival overgrowth due to prolonged medication orthodontic appliances uh, can produce a dramatic response in the gingival tissue even if there is no gingival overgrowth prior to the treatment so another finding in uh, patients with end stage kidney failure is drug induced gingival hyperplasia so its mechanism of occurrence is multifactorial and it has not been fully explained so the intake of antihypertensive and immunosuppressive drugs uh, gives evidence in the oral cavity such overgrowth is usually observed in the early post transplantation period and in combination with insufficient oral hygiene or previously damaged periodontia so this picture shows gingival hyperplasia due to cyclospore so these are the few drug of choice in uh, chronic renal uh, disease patients the antibiotics penicillin clindamycin and ciprofloxacins are commonly used paracetamol is the drug of choice among non narcotic analgesics benzodiazepines can be prescribed without dose adjustment narcotic analgesics which can be used are codeine morphine uh, fentanyl and immunosuppressant ciprofloxacins are used orthodontic consideration for children who have received kidney transplant so first uh the patient has to be examined to assess the extent of drug induced gingival overgrowth then orthodontic treatment shouldn't commence if oral hygiene is not good 0.2 percentage of chlorhexidine mouthwash is advisable in these patients if gingival over, uh, overgrowth is present orthodontic treatment should be delayed till the overgrowth is removed surgically and there is adequate level of plaque control and uh, the treatment time for such patients has to be reduced regular visits to a dental uh, hygienist during the course of the orthodontic treatment is necessary if there is recurrence of gingival overgrowth surgical removal may be necessary during the orthodontic treatment and patient should be warned of this in advance 
moving on to musculoskeletal disorders so the two main musculoskeletal disorders that we come across is juvenile idiopathic arthritis and osteoporosis so juvenile idiopathic arthritis is a severe disease of childhood it comprises a diverse group of distinct clinical entities of unclear etiology JIA is classified according to the type of onset of the disease and the number of joints affected during the first 4 to 6 months. Posse arthritis and oligoarthritis denotes four or less joints being involved and polyarthritis when five or more joints are involved. JIA can be of varying severity with localized and or systemic complications including functional impairment of the affected joints. This may result in disturbances in growth and development anomalies. There is remission of the disease in adolescence, which happens for around seventy percent of the patients. The TMJ is affected in forty-five percent of the cases with JIA. Involvement of TMJ may cause condylar hypoplasia and mandibular retrognathism. JIA patients commonly present with skeletal class two and open bite malocclusions, so mandibular asymmetry is seen in cases with unilateral TMJ involvement. So the early orthodontic intervention. facilitates both the skeletal and the occlusal rehabilitation the prevalence of dental caries and periodontal disease in higher is higher in adolescent with jae cases treatment is aimed at controlling the clinical manifestations by suppressing the articular inflammation and pain preserving joint mobility and preventing deformity so nsaids are used in the early stages and more severe cases are prescribed with Uh, a variety of medicaments such as gold methotrexate corticosteroids and antimalarial drugs these drugs have their own adverse effect uh, which must be reflected on during orthodontic treatment planning so here the main aim is to allow the child to live as normal life as possible so the functional ability of the tmj in jaa children should be monitored closely in order to start medical treatment as soon as inflammation begins at the joint so the tmj in a growing child has immense potential for structural changes and growth can normalize provided the inflammation is controlled early and mandibular growth is supported there is remission of the disease in adolescents for 70% of the patients oral hygiene aids including um, modified toothbrushes handles and electrical toothbrushes can be recommended for patients with jie a bite splint can be provided to unload the joint during any acute periods of inflammation a distracted splint has also been suggested to modify mandibular growth in the same way as conventional functional appliances the use of functional appliances in patients is a controversial area and it has been uh, argued that functional appliances and class 2 elastics put increased um, stress on the tmj and should be avoided however it has also been suggested that functional appliances protect the joints by relieving the affected tmj and uh, the aim being uh, to move the mandible into the normal anterior growth rotational pattern thus correcting the skeletal class 2 relationship surgery can be considered if um, Uh, the problem cannot be treated orthodontically however it has been suggested that the mandibular surgery should be avoided and instead a patient with severe mandibular deficiency should have maxillary surgery and genioplasty now coming on to osteoporosis so osteoporosis is a common progressive metabolic disease of the bone that decreases the bone density and deterioration of the bone structure Osteoporosis can develop as primary disorder or secondarily due to some other factor. It is most common in women after menopause but may develop in men. Risk factors that um, cannot be altered include advanced age being female, estrogen deficiency after menopause and being of European or Asian origin. So potentially modifiable risk factors include excessive alcohol intake, vitamin D deficiency, smoking, lower uh, body mass index, malnutrition and physical inactivity osteoporotic bone uh, or osteoporotic bone loss affects cortical and cancellous uh, bone and animal studies have shown that this process can result in decreased oral bone density and alveolar bone loss both bone resorption and formation are accelerated and excessive bone resorption leads to loss of attachment this theoretically can affect the rate of tooth movement 
Treatment modalities include medication, exercise, a diet sufficient in calcium and vitamin D, lifestyle changes, and bisphosphonate medications. Um, coming on to the orthodontic considerations, the main implication on orthodontic treatment are due to um, bisphosphonate use. So bisphosphonates inhibit the resorption of trabecular bone by osteoclast um, and hence um, bisphosphonates inhibits resorption of trabecular bone by osteoclast and hence preserve bone density. Although their medical benefits have been proven, there are increasing number of side effects that can affect the orthodontic uh, treatment, including delayed tooth eruption, inhibited tooth movement, impaired bone healing, and bisphosphonate include osteoradionecrosis of the jaw. So in postmenopausal osteoporosis, uh, there can be alveolar bone loss, periodontal disease, increased orthodontic tooth movement, and increased orthodontic relapse. In senile osteoporosis, there can be decreased orthodontic tooth movement and increased orthodontic relapse. In corticosteroid-induced osteoporosis, there can be increased orthodontic tooth movement, inhibition of bone formation, increased orthodontic relapse. So estrogen supplementation can lead to reduced orthodontic tooth movement and bisphosphonate therapy. Uh, orally can reduce orthodontic tooth movement and cause uh, osteonecrosis. Now moving on to endocrine system and its implications in orthodontics. Starting with growth hormone. Uh, so as we all know, hypothalamus stimulates the pituitary gland to release growth hormone. It's a bit like growth factor which initiates the response in the bone, uh, bone forming cells. Uh, muscular forming cells, fat forming cells, and the growth hormone releasing uh, hormone from the stomach also regulates the pituitary gland to release the growth hormone. So its dental manifestations, which are seen, are uh, small facial height width and the width, small head circumference, disparity in size between the maxilla and mandible, retrognathic mandible with crowding, linear growth delay, delayed dentition. Mid facial hypoplasia, single central incisors. So, starting with acromegaly. So, uh, in this, it is most commonly seen due to a pituitary adenoma and can be seen in association with uh, McCune Albright syndrome and in neurofibromatosis type 1. So, here we can see widely spaced teeth, prominent jaws, lower jaw in particular cross might and coarse facial features so the effects of growth hormone therapy on orthodontics is particularly uh, you can see an increased facial height and uh, because of a lesser effect on the facial width it will also affect the jaw alignment so the orthodontic intervention is that the uh, it, it uh, involves a conjunction with the growth hormone replacement therapy which should resolve the micrognathia. And next is thyroid. So thyroid gland produces two hormones, calcitonin and thyroxin. So calcitonin is a minor hormone in bone metabolism, which works opposite to the parathyroid hormone and decreases the serum calcium levels. And calcitonin therapy uh, has been reported to be useful for osteoporosis and giant cell granulomas of the jaw. So the dental manifestation of uh, due to thyroid uh, conditions are uh, either a hypothyroidism or hypothyroidism. In hypothyroidism, we can see malocclusion, delayed eruption, prominent and large tongue, swollen gingiva, increased risk of caries, delayed post-op healing, and defects in taste and smell. That is in hypothyroidism, you can see weight loss, exophthalmosis, premature tooth eruption and increased saliva and there will be gingival pain and sweating. So starting uh, with the uh, hyperparathyroidism, it affects the vitamin D in the blood. It reduces the renal clearance of the calcium levels. It also increases the intestinal calcium absorption. It increases the intestinal calcium absorption. So parathyroid diseases uh, they can be the primary hyperparathyroidism, thyroidism, or uh, secondary hyperparathyroidism. So, primary is due to hypoplasia or adenoma or carcinomas of the parathyroid glands. 
and uh, 